I'm developing a fantasy game about exploration and discovery, the first of which in a series of games I plan to make with this engine that I made. I'm working towards making one big cumulative game based on everything I've learnt and I do genuinely consider that to be my life's work. And I'm also using YouTube to promote it. So, hey, how you doing? But writing your own game engine does come with its own crusty shenanigans as you essentially have to do a lot of the stuff from scratch. And here's one problem I've come up against time and time again. The game doesn't actually do full screen. You can't even resize it. This has been requested before and it also just makes the game quite difficult to play on smaller screens. This month being the long awaited bug fix and stability month, I'd finally decided that full screen's time had come. So let's get to it. So like most things, when I first started trying to implement full screen, I just had to spend a bit of time looking around the internet to find out how others actually got it to work. The problem I had was that it wasn't just getting the windowing API to make the window go full screen, it was also that the user interface components actually need to know how to deal with that when it actually happens. But then you've got to start thinking about the other weird edge cases. What if someone has like an extra ultra wide monitor? What if someone has a weird device like, I don't know, a Steam Deck? I don't know what resolution that's in, but you know, it's probably something like that. How would you make the window be able to resize it accordingly? So you could just put these sort of black boxes on the side of the rendering, but what are you, an animal? So really, from the perspective of the developer, what you actually want to do is design your user interface around like some sort of constant. So for instance, 16 by nine ratio. And as I'm lucky enough to have a small online community, I went on my Discord server and asked if anyone knew how to do this. And I'd also like to give a special thank you to Daryl <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know how to say that. It was especially helpful in correlating some of the other things that people have said online about the best way to do this stuff. This guy writes his own engine as well, so, you know, I guess I can take his word for it. So the general consensus online seemed to be that you design your user interface around a single aspect ratio, so for instance 16 by 9, and then you'd scale that however you could to fit within the bounds of the window size. That would allow you to have a consistent area to do your user interface stuff. And then of course you could extend things like the game actual rendering viewport out to the size of the screen, but everything else would be able to stay within that area. So the aspect ratio bit wasn't actually the difficult bit to get working. The difficult bit was rewriting all of the user interfaces I'd already written to support this new system. It was actually quite difficult to get everything to resize appropriately, and the difficulty was that you had to get it to like recreate in exactly the same state as it used to be, so it all had to look identical. This ended up with me having to rewrite a bunch of different stuff, and it ultimately just ended up becoming kind of complicated. So now, with the window resizing support was more flexible than it was before, all I really needed to do was actually implement the whole taking the full screen aspect to it. So most modern operating systems have two ways of doing full screen. There's true full screen and borderless full screen. So true full screen is like the game takes the entire full screen but things can get a little spicy if you try old tabbing out of it because it's been put in like this weird sandbox state. Borderless full screen is when you just sort of get rid of all the window decorations of the screen itself, resize it to fill the entire size of the monitor and then disable all like user interface decoration stuff like the taskbar. So it gives the impression of full screen but then you can also do things like alt tab in and out with no problem because it's just a window. And generally users do much prefer the borderless approach. I ended up having to add a few different features to my windowing system in order to get this to work but the thing is I'm going to be writing lots of different projects using this engine and as far as I see it if I do this once and I don't have to do it for some other project later on I can just copy and paste all this code I've written into these other projects and it will all work perfectly. Now other than the fact that I can now properly full screen things this change also made some things just work better like for instance on the Steam Deck you couldn't used to be able to move the mouse down to like the very corner of the display it used to just have a complete mental breakdown whenever you tried to do that that's fixed now as a result of this change. Now in the theme of fixing bugs I continued writing the automated testing system that I was writing the other week. I generally improved the framework massively so I can now do things like click on buttons, check for text on the screen, just generally run logic within the game, that sort of thing. So the way I did this was that I'd write the test for the issue, check it actually failed, fix the issue itself, and then suddenly the test would actually pass. But the good thing about this is that it will test a bunch of other things in doing that, like even starting the game up and checking that nothing goes wrong is a good test in and of itself because it's just a complete sanity test. I'm not going to go too hard on the testing just because I do want to maintain that flexibility when it comes to actually game development, but they're still very useful to have from a perspective of sanity testing. So here's the list of tests that I've already written and also I managed to fix a few bugs as a result of writing them. So one of the main things I discovered was that there's issues with Unicode on Windows and I think that has a lot to do with why the bullet points in the exploration complete screen don't actually look correct. 
because I found that one of the automated tests, which just tests like some Japanese characters, failed horrifically, like the engine actually died as a result of it, as a result of something that went wrong in the tests. What's interesting about this is it's never actually gone wrong on the Mac, but I guess that would go a lot of the way to explain why things like the Asian text in the GUI example don't work properly on Windows. The bad thing is that I didn't have my MacBook for much of this week for various issues, so I wasn't able to compare and contrast what the actual difference was between the two platforms, so I'm going to deal with this next week. I was able to properly publish the results of the testing on GitHub as a result of this pipeline thing. This means that anyone can just access the results of the test without having to go through the logs, which is just much nicer. I spent a lot of time just trying to fix issues with the Steam Deck because I really want to play it on the Steam Deck. The main issue was that if you did anything with any of the joysticks, the game would just crash entirely. So I spent a bit of the time with the controller support to try and improve it a bit. Mm -hmm. Oh well, thank you Nintendo. Now, do you guys remember that missing mesh issue that I was complaining about for a long, long time? Well, I still kept running into it. The ultimate best code I've ever written in my lifetime was just to run it in a loop until it detected no more XML files without their appropriate mesh files. So that might have been a bit of a hack, but at the same time, I haven't seen the issue reoccur since, so maybe it's fine. Now, one of the things was that a few devlogs ago, I spent a lot of time parading around the fact that I'd fixed this issue where you weren't getting like true 4K rendering. Now, that was good, but it only applied to macOS. Actually, on the Windows build, nothing changed. And that is, of course, a problem because the vast majority of people actually use Windows. So if you don't explicitly declare that your application is DPI aware, with DPI meaning that you're just aware that some monitors are going to be higher resolution than others, Windows will just give you the absolute bog standard, low resolution display of what you'd expect from a really, really old computer. That meant that every time you went to query anything to ask of what like the actual rendering resolution was, it would always just give you like a HD resolution rather than like a 4K one, even if you were on a 4K monitor. That was of course kind of odd and it just took me a little while to figure out how to get that to actually work properly. After trying out a bunch of weird hacks, the solution ended up being that I just had to update to a later version of SDL2 and then set this hint that told it to set up the DPI awareness stuff. That would go off and tell the operating system that the application knew how to do higher resolution stuff. It looked much better as a result. A few other smaller bits and pieces from this week. I wrote some scripts to help me install builds of the game onto the Steam Deck. I really love the Steam Deck, I don't know if I've already said. And you know, it's actually very nice to play it with a handheld, so it's nice to have that. I also started work on this Elite Hacker debug command line, which is just going to be used to send commands to the game. There's a few cases where I want to do things like set player invincibility or like spawn enemies or give the player items and I'll be able to do that from this command line. It just makes things easier. So there we have it boys. In terms of like major features that got implemented, that was really what I did for the past two weeks. It's worth pointing out that a lot of this work was like infrastructure work. So some of it didn't even get mentioned because it wasn't like that interesting. Um, but I do believe very strongly that all this stuff had to be done. I'm planning to get back to actual game development next month. So I'm thinking I'm going to be doing some combat stuff combat system is really in need of a looking over. To my to my mind, I'd probably imagine it'll go a month of combat, a month of user interface design and improvements, um, probably thinking more about game infrastructure stuff after that. So I'm thinking I need to get the whole like town editor system working. I want to have player customizability because then that will be like on the road to getting NPC support in, you know, if you can have different like looking characters and that sort of thing. And then going from there, it'll probably be like, you know, starting to work on the dialogue system or the quest system or just something like that. Like there's lots of very fun, exciting things coming soon. And also I'm recording my first ever video in like my new recording area, which isn't exactly done yet, but it's still partly there. So we're moving on. You should definitely subscribe. All right. See you next week.